Okay. So we are here for a peer learning lunch to hear from um, some affiliate community foundations that have done their planning um, for the way they want to make investments in the community and um, also uh, for one of the community foundations they talked a little bit about an operational plan and so we're going to hear about those today. Um, and so we have deep appreciation to these three community um, affiliate community foundations, Leslie County Community Foundation, the Perry County Community Foundation, and the Upper Cumberland Community Foundation, all of whom are going to share some highlights of their plans with us. And then we'll do that for about the first 30 minutes, 10 minutes each. And then we'll have some conversation about the, um, the plans that they share, so. So we thank you for your time with this and I'm going to stop sharing this now and we will get right down to brass tacks. And so I thought what we would do is start out with Leslie County, which is actually the most recent community foundation to do their strategic plan. Um, and so they still have a draft uh, in the works sort of. We've kind of communicated back and forth by email uh, because I don't think that's been officially approved yet, but Joel Brashear is here to talk about their plan. So Joel, take it away. And if you need us to share anything, or if you want to share your screen, you just let us know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can share the plan so everybody can kind of see it. I think that might be. Okay, let me, um, I will make you a co-host. But you should now be able to share your screen. Okay. And... I think it's this one. Can you guys see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, when we started Leslie County five or six years ago, we kind of had five real areas that we wanted to focus on. And uh, we looked back at those for where we wanted to go with, with this new thinking. Uh, economic growth was a big one. Uh, youth support. We have a, a youth group called Place uh, that we have here in Leslie County and engaging them and doing more work with them is uh, we think is very important. Uh, something new that's kind of come up, you know, we, we've always been interested in health issues uh, and a couple of our board members are very interested in, in addressing the substance abuse issues. That's a, a huge weakness for us right now. So that's something that uh, we want to address moving forward. Uh, arts and heritage, you know, we have the Bluegrass School here. It's been a great partner for our community foundation. Uh, so we want to keep that going. And then uh, growing resources, uh, developing our endowment is probably going to be our biggest project moving forward over the next couple of years. So we're very excited about that. Uh, do you want me to go through some of the individual actual plans we're going to be doing? Sure. Just whatever highlights you want to hear. Feel free. Uh, this, I'm excited about this one. This is a partnership between the, the foundation and our local chamber. We got a grant a couple years ago now. I guess it was like this time last year we got it um, to uh, for economic development here in Leslie County. And we want to host webinars, seminars, however we can get the information out there to develop more business in Hyden in Leslie County. Uh, so we, we're going to do uh, in-person meetings, Zooms, whatever we can do, bring in experts, try to develop new businesses and develop better business practices with the folks that are already here. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we're going to incentivize them. If they go through the program, uh, we're going to give them a commercial. We're going to produce it for them. So we think that that's got some benefit to it, along with all the information they'll be able to get. So we're really excited about that. The chamber president is on our uh, foundation board, so she's really behind it. Uh, and so we're really excited about that one. Uh, this one kind of goes along with that, supporting downtown revitalization. Um, the SEDIC grant that we got, uh, it's been a while back now. We're still rolling out uh, the funding for all that. If anybody's friends with me on Facebook, you might've seen the giant eagle that we just unveiled. Um, that's the first of two that, that was funded through this uh, SEDIC grant. Uh, that was part of the downtown revitalization work. That's also going to the community garden through the outdoor classroom and city park, some new playground equipment. Let me turn my phone down. Um, and then the new museum that the city just bought. Um, 
And then in addition to that, we just got some great news yesterday when this plan was being written, this was kind of tentative, but the Thompson Foundation has, uh, has granted us some money that we are extremely excited about that's gonna be focusing on downtown revitalization. Uh, youth support, I told you a little bit about PLACE. PLACE stands for Philanthropy, Leadership, Advocacy, Culture, and Engagement. And we've got about 30 kids at the high school that are very active and really interested in, in doing a lot more. Uh, we kind of see them as a, a junior foundation board. So we're training them to be local leaders, community activists, things like that. And we also want them to be fundraisers. So they're actively going out and having fundraisers and looking for grant opportunities. Uh, they just got a grant through CEDIC for $7,500 that will be addressing mental health and substance abuse. So we're really excited about that. Uh, another part of that is the adult boot camp. We actually stole that idea from Perry County. Uh, the Perry County High Schools, uh, Hazard, PCC, and Buckhorn came together. Uh, this was before COVID, so I guess two years ago now, and held two events for their high school, I want to say their freshmen, where they taught skills that they just don't have time for in the classroom. Things like changing tires, doing laundry, writing a check in a checkbook, things like that. Uh, so we're working with the kids uh, for them to identify areas of weakness that they just don't have. Um, they're not getting taught. So we can bring in experts from the community. We can bring in the guy that runs uh, the towing company to help them learn to change a tire. We can bring in, you know, whoever. And this also establishes stronger connections with the kids and the community. So we're really excited about that. We talked about the substance abuse issues. We're, we're just trying to find more connections in the community. There's not a lot of 501c3s in Leslie County. Um, so that's something else we've talked about, uh, maybe looking to develop and foster. But uh, Addiction Recovery Center is a regional group I'm sure everybody knows about. They have expressed interest in coming to Leslie County and putting in a facility. We're very interested in helping them foster that. So that's, that's a part of that plan. Continuing to support the Bluegrass School, we try to raise at least $10,000 a year for them for scholarships. We usually do a little bit better than that, but um, they had over 100 students this semester. So that program is really growing, it's doing great. So we're, we're thrilled about that. Uh, the S&T building, if you've been downtown in Hyden, it's probably the biggest building in, in town and it's mostly empty right now. Uh, so we'd like to get that uh, occupant ready for a couple commercial businesses and have a community space that would work as a uh, performance space for bluegrass students, the high school drama club, things like that, and then could also be used for like receptions and meetings and things. So that's part of our downtown revitalization plan that kind of ties into the art stuff too. This is the thing we're most excited about. This is our, our club 404, which we're kind of borrowing from, I think Floyd and Clinton County have club ideas. And, um, they base their clubs on square mileage of the county. So we did the same thing. Leslie County is 404 square miles. So we did a little math and we figured if we could find 400 people to donate $400 for the next four years, we would raise enough to get $25,000 a year out of the endowment. So we thought that was a pretty good round number. It's a good story to tell and it's perpetual. And I think that's the thing that we can really sell it on is we can all come together to put this money to good use and it's always gonna be there and it's always gonna be uh, able to support and, and better Leslie County. So that, that's our capital campaign. We're very excited about that. I'm meeting with Tanya tomorrow to get that ball rolling. So we're very excited. And then we talked about the Thompson Foundation. That's another thing we wanna keep doing is looking for outside resources, grant opportunities, regional and national. Um, you know, obviously our capital campaign is going to be important, but we got to find as many resource streams as we can. And then holding special events and fundraisers. This is, we've focused a lot on this in the past and we have not been very successful. We, we have several events and uh, our board likes to do them. They think they're important for the community, but as far as a fundraising entity, we have not had a ton of success. We've had local treasures, of which we stole from Jackson County. And they have been much more successful with that concept than we have. But as far as the event itself, it's great to recognize local leaders and, and come together and things like that. So we're, we're very excited about the idea. 
but as far as actually bringing money in, it's not been super successful. And that's all of them. That's kind of where we're at. Helps me to be unmuted. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> um, so uh, I, we could either, I think what we'll do is get all the plans presented and then just do a general discussion if that suits everybody to do it that way. Um, so let's hear from Perry County next. Um, they um, realized as we did their planning process um, that really they, they were looking at how they wanted to invest in the community and also looking at um, some operational things. And so that's what their plan is gonna reflect. So Melissa, I think you're going to share about that. And Joel, if you'll stop sharing your screen, then we'll, um, that's fine, thank you. Then um, Melissa, I don't know if you want to share a screen or have it. We yes. do have the plan pulled up. If you uh, yes, I've got it pulled up, okay. and so I can I can do that. Um, I, first, I want to say before I share it, um, a tremendous thank you to Donna and the folks at Brushy Fork. I know that that came through you know a, a relationship with the foundation, and and that was all worked out, but. Boy, Donna's a trooper, and she was such a cat herder. <laughs> and so we had many, 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 many meetings, hours. I don't know, Joel, how long it took you to put yours together, but gosh, oh, you know, Donna would commit to hours, and then we need another meeting, and then she commit to a few more hours, and we need another meeting. And um, uh, but I'm just thank you, Donna, for sticking with us, and thank you for seeing us to the end, um, because uh, we really were very thoughtful, and we debated and discussed and changed our minds and went in different directions, and and Donna was right there with us the whole time. So I'm just very grateful. So let me share my screen, and um, some of this is going to look a little familiar. Um, let's see. I think it should. Yeah, there we go. Good. And it's this one. So you can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. So um, we have a, um, a document. It's about 13 pages because we do have an operational and, and strategic investment plan. Um, we we feel like that the area that we are missing um, uh, significantly is the board being very active in uh, donor development, in adding to our endowment, in continuing to educate folks um, in our community about the uh, about the investment opportunity. I want to use those words intentionally: investment opportunity in the community community through um, the Perry County Community Foundation. You know, we, we were um, blessed with some money early on, even before some of us that are on the board now were even thought about. And um, I, I honestly, and we'll just, just be a little honest, I think it, it helped us be a little lazy in our work because we could kind of just go, okay, we'll just use, you know, some interest and, and we'll grant some money and just kind of move along. Well, we're, we really need to do better and we need to do more. So in our uh, summary, we talk about um, that we're going to try to create awareness. We're going to, uh, and it, it was interesting because we started talking about developing a marketing plan un, unknowingly that the foundation was going to start a rebranding uh, program and it was all going to happen at the same time. So that's kind of worked out um, and we're excited about what, the foundation is continuing to do and, and how that work is going to help and benefit us. Um, but we we have um, some ideas about how we want to be able to um, create awareness, uh, get the word out, not only just for donors, that's important, but also then to, to potential grantees. Um, so we're going to um, find ways to make sure that if we give a grant or we give a sponsorship that uh, somehow the foundation is going to be recognized. We're going to be looking for sign opportunities, naming opportunities, um, opportunities to make sure our names are on t-shirts, you know, all of those kinds of things to just kind of continue to create awareness. Uh, so people say, hey, well, what is that? You know, because we want them to do that. 
Another weakness that we saw is that we're really, really good about serving the city limits. Um, a lot of our work is focused on the city limits, but boy, oh, you know, there's a huge missed opportunity out in the county. And so we want to really make sure that we're not just serving the city proper. So we want to find opportunities to engage additionally with the outlying communities. One of the things that we talked about being able to do, and I don't remember if it was listed here, is the volunteer fire departments. You know, the volunteer fire departments are really spread out among. And so we, we kind of toyed around with the idea of, God, you know, what if we just committed to to because they all have you know various fundraising events to committing you know a five hundred dollar sponsorship because um, we could I, I don't know for sure that we could do that because there are a lot of them but just again to to make ourselves known in the community and that that might be a good way to do that so um, and of course we just talked about by by doing that if we can create an awareness in the community that hey this is not just about this you know city of hazard that maybe we can pick up partnerships and donor opportunities out in the county itself from from that population um, we also kind of have a name uh, kind of a, a, a static group of people that kind of approach us every year for funding and we feel like maybe there's some other folks out there that might be um, interested or uh, maybe they just don't know again part of that awareness but we want to make sure that we have other folks that are thinking about us too and, and considering to, to um, uh, come to us maybe to ask for funding. Um, it's also important for us to have some professional development for our members. Uh, we want to make sure that those members absolutely know how to give the little elevator speech when they have a sidebar conversation with someone, that they know what to say, that they know the story we're trying to tell. Not that it has to be word for word, that we're not in for that, but we do want to make sure that we have the same messaging that is going out and that we are all at least telling the same story but that story could be told differently, but it is the same story. So we want to be able to make sure that our board members are trained and comfortable, because that was a huge thing we heard is, oh, you know, I just don't know if I could do that. And I don't knock that. I, I'm not complaining at all. Some people, you know, that's not their gift. They do a lot of things behind the scenes. But we want to try to make um, an effort to get everyone uh, comfortable. And then, of course, the growing capacity. We've got to we've got to get on this donor development. We need to have a strategy. We need to be uh, more actively involved. I had just mentioned. I don't know if everybody was on the call, but I had mentioned um, jokingly, but seriously, that we challenged our board that by the next time that we meet, that that folks will have viewed the last two donor development webinars that have been provided, and that we we talk through those and that we start developing some ideas and some strategies about what we are going to do next. Now it says create a donor development strategy. I'm not real sure what that's gonna look like for our foundation. Is that gonna be a form of document? Um, is that going to be you know, just something that we um, uh, have, you know, that we kind of talk through each time? I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure what that's gonna look like. But, but we are going to have a strategy, whether it's in our mind, whether it's on paper, you know, I'm not sure, but, but we're going to work on that. Uh, we also understand and appreciate that the foundation is available to us, um, that if we do identify donors, that we uh, do have the opportunity to ask them to help make introductions for us, to help arrange meetings, to kind of get involved. In some cases that may not be needed, but we do appreciate the fact that they are there for us and we, we recognize that. Um, Joel, this probably looks familiar to you because this is, this is what uh, a, a very similar template. Um, one of the things that we note that our values are, and I think that's important, to mention is that we're gonna value all community members and that we're gonna reflect the community priorities and that we're gonna improve the quality of life for our, our citizens. And this middle part, the reflect community priorities, the, the, what, what we mean there is there's a lot of fantastic work that is already going on. Um, the city of Hazard has uh, within the last two or three years have put together their strategic plan um, there's a lot of good work happening at the county level. I'm talking about now the government levels. 
Um, there's a lot of partnership that's going on between those. There's a lot of nonprofit good works that are happening, uh, downtown revitalization that is happening. Um, and so we don't necessarily want to go rogue. There may be spe special projects that we may want to be involved and engaged in that are just our priorities. But generally speaking, I'm pretty sure that everything that, that is kind of our focus has been the community's focus. So we don't wanna reinvent the wheel. We wanna join in on the work. Um, Henry Blackaby who wrote Experiencing God talks about, you know, see where God is working and join him there. So translating that to this is see where the community is working and let's join them there. So there would be opportunities for us to maybe uh, serve as a match for grant opportunities. There may be times where we can um, uh, have challenges, you know, where other folks can go out and, re and raise money for uh, causes. Uh, or maybe there's a big, um, I think about the dog park as an example here in Perry County. That was a big community effort, lots of different funders, but the foundation was able to step up and join in and be a part of that. So we don't want to necessarily reinvent something complete uh, or invent something complete on our own. We want to be conscious of what's happening and make our dollars work um, in those areas. So we felt that that was important. Again, when we were writing this, little did we know that the foundation was kind of doing their own thing, but it is so important to us to actually commit uh, increased community awareness that we're willing to put some dollars to that. Uh, to make sure that we have everything we need to be able to share with donors, to be able to share with grantees. We want some videos. Um, uh, we want a little, uh, um, uh, of course, our little page or our development page. You guys have all seen that. We've all been getting headshots to be able to put on there. Uh, there's going to be just a lot of opportunity. So we want to be able to do that. The grow capacity, you know, we just talked about that, that we want to be able to create our donor development and we want to do something with that. We want to host education and outreach events to bring everybody else on board with what this is. You know, our feeling was, okay, if we educate folks and they end up giving to another nonprofit, that's okay too, because it's raising the entire community. It's not just the foundation. So we're okay with that, um, but we do need to grow capacity in our region, let folks know that it's meaningful to give money somewhere, hopefully to us. Um, and we want to identify some projects that we want to invest in. So here were kind of our, our ideas that we wanted to invest in. Um, a lot of this is not necessarily new to us, but once again, we're putting it on paper. So we want to just kind of say, these are the things that we want to be able to do. Um, but as a part of that, we identified three projects because here's, here's the other shift for us. Previously, we've been doing a lot of passive giving, but what we want to do is be more intentional and we, the board, want to identify initiatives that we want to sponsor. Not necessarily waiting for them to come and ask us for a grant, but things that we feel that are important that we want to be a part of. So, for example, here in Hazard, um, Housing Development Alliance um, is, is, is developing houses at what's called Gurney's Bend. And there is a, a lot that is not going to be developed that is going to be used for some type of green space. So we identified that as a possibility to give something significant to either create a playground, to create a green space, a community garden. We don't know what that is yet because HDA wants to get a feel for who's going to occupy those homes. What if they're all retired grandparents, you know, so maybe or maybe not a, a, a playground is the right idea, but anyhow, we want to do that. So uh, we have identified that and we're hoping that that is something that we can support fairly soon with about $25,000. The other thing that's happening in our community that we want to be a part of is the Southeast Kentucky African American Museum and, and Cultural Center. Now that is very fledgling right now. We will probably not be supporting that this year because they um, are just capacity building. I mean, they, they don't even have the ability right now to even receive grant funds because they're just getting their feet wet. They recently applied for some grant funding to try to create a strategic plan and kind of put some of those things in effect. But we've got that in the back of our mind that when they get off and running and they're up and really doing something, the city's got a space, 
that they're going to use for this. And so there's a lot of parts working together, but this is something we want to get behind and that we want to show the community that we're very supportive of all community members, you know, that that we want it to be as inclusive as possible. And this is just one little tiny thing that we can do for that. Uh, number three is something that we just actually recently did do. Um, this is, um, you know, the art station is happening. It's in existence. Tim Deaton is leading that effort. It is further along than I ever imagined it that that it would be and uh, very excited. They actually had their first fundraiser, like big community kind of everybody gets to go fundraiser. Uh, it was one of the first, um, I don't know if we can say pre-COVID yet, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say pre-COVID um, events. And it was the Derby party that was held um, on Derby day. Um, and we surprised them um, with a check for $10,000 to offer as a challenge grant that they now have to go out and raise an additional $10,000 that is going to support the continued development. It's actually gonna be for their general operating. They need, they need to keep people on the payroll and they've gotta be able to continue to pay Tim Deaton because he's doing fantastic stuff. He's got lots of great plans and we just need to not have these guys have to worry about whether or not they're gonna be able to pay their own rent. So hopefully they'll be able to meet that challenge. I don't think they'll have any problems. Uh, Bobby, I was just thinking that we probably need to touch base with Tim to see, um, ask him to give us a plan or a strategy for that challenge. So, um, sure. but these are our projects. Uh, we also want to continue to support, um, this is not necessarily big funding opportunities today, but we wanna to continue to support downtown revitalization. We want to continue to support trail development in our area. Um, ben Brayman has been doing a fantastic job and Pathfinders and, and lots of uh, activity and things happening there. But this third thing is something that I'm kind of excited about and I'm really hoping we can do. The city, um, the downtown city of Hazard, not downtown, city of Hazard has developed these neighborhood councils where they want to try to create awareness and activism and engagement all throughout the city limits. Honestly, it's not up and running yet, but it's very close. We as the foundation want to observe that and kind of watch and see how that grows and develops and hearkening back to that idea of getting out into the county. We want to see whether or not something like this could possibly be developed in the county and if the foundation could be a part of that. Um, in the back of my mind, not in the back of the board's mind, I'm curious as to whether the volunteer fire departments could possibly play into that because there's little communities around these uh, departments. So once again, if we can establish some relationships with those fire departments, then we might be able to establish relationships in the community and maybe these neighborhood councils, they might be based out of the fire departments. I don't know. I don't know. It's all food for thought, but we want to see how things happen in the city first and see if that's something that we could be a part of. Um, this just continues uh, some of the work. Um, I wanna, uh, I'll skip over a lot of this because I don't wanna take up other, other people's time. But um, because again, Donna did a great job, provided us with lots of information here. So um, I do wanna show these last couple of things is we have created a, a matrix for determining how we're gonna fund things. Sometimes we get in our meetings and we don't know whether or not that they fit uh, what we think they should fit. So we've got some criteria here that we're gonna use to determine whether or not that it's something that fits our mission or fits our values. So we have a couple of matrix um, that we are gonna use when making decisions when we're presented with grant opportunities. So at that point, I'm gonna stop. Um, I have talked too long, but we're very excited. And again, we would not have any of this without Donna and without the help of the Brushy Fork Institute and without the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky making that a priority to get them involved. So big thank you. Thank you, Melissa. And I mean, you can see that each of these plans looks pretty different, but what the, the piece that is similar in them is that planning template that um, is kind of the centerpiece that kind of says, here's the result we want and here are the strategies that we're going to, um, to pursue around that. Um, and so um, the Upper Cumberland Community Foundation, Sandy Kurt is here to present about their plan. They actually did their plan last October and we did that plan really quickly in, did we do it in one or two meetings, Sandy? I can't remember. It was in two meetings, two two hour meetings. 
And um, the heart of their plan is really that planning template, or at least that's the document that I still have is that one page template. Because at the time that we started this, the I, you know, my idea, my vision for it was we're going to have these one page templates that we can hand out. So what you're going to see is that as these plans have evolved, there has been there have been more kinds of things added to that one page template. And so um, that's what you're going to see is a difference here. I wanted to say that. Um, but Sandy, um, go ahead and present and um, we will then um, take some time to just talk about the what we see in all these plans. Now, uh, it does say that uh, you have disabled participant screen sharing. So oh, I don't I'm know if- I'm so sorry. I don't know. I, I mean, I would have thought it would have just been multiple and- I know, let me- And I would have been the multiple, but- um, Okay, all right. See if it'll okay. work for you now. Let's, I don't think I just have to make it with a co-host. Okay, so share the screen and I want to go- Oh, sorry, Sandy. Oh, that's okay. I don't- <laughs> All right, so there you go. Can you all see it? Thumbs up? Yeah, that's any- Okay, great, great, great. All right, so um, you've noticed it looks very familiar. And uh, and again, one of the things that I come to, to this group to share is that we are the youngest among you all. Uh, we are uh, the biggest among you all, and we are the poorest among you all. Uh, we came to this without uh, any uh, lump of money beforehand or even with philanthropists that wanted to do this. We came with just this idea that philanthropy needed to grow in these five counties. How can we find enough leaders to come together to make this happen? And what would that look like if we did that? And one of the things that we really spent a lot of time, I thought, was just on our values and being able to share. Because again, when you are talking regional and you're talking about five counties with seven different cities, you get a lot of um, uh, different perspectives. And so what was uh, we wanted to see what was our shared values in uh, why we would want to work together as a, as a regional foundation. Uh, and one, we wanted to provide leadership to our communities to say that there are times when community and regional sharing is advantageous. Uh, we wanted to be able to embrace and to, uh, and to exemplify the what is beautiful about regional collaboration. It's not exclusive, but it can be done and be very beneficial. Uh, empower our communities to give them a greater breadth of infrastructure, especially in developing charitable ideas. Um, and we wanted to embrace and promote these opportunities. Um, our, our operational values and bullet points, we wanna respect everybody. Uh, and that whole business of uh, rolling our eyes or not trusting someone in a fellow community needs to be gone. Uh, we want to we want to do that because we want to be transparent. Uh, if you give me a check, you should be able to find exactly what happened to it and follow the paper trail and not even have to blink or ask twice to get that information. We want to be good stewards of our resources. We do not want to somebody to come along and accuse us of using contributions in, a, in an improper way by funding things that do not need to be funded or uh, or using them fraudulently. Uh, we want to inspire confidence and trust. We think that is some of the biggest issues that we have with regard to moving this forward, especially since we don't have a, a founding philanthropist to have moved us forward in order for us to gain the trust of those people that want to give. We have to demonstrate to them awareness as well as uh, trustworthiness in the number of people that come on board on us. And to be even handed uh, was the way that our group described the, the idea that we are we're going to we're going to treat each community equally. One community may be more affluent than the community, but that doesn't mean that they have more value, uh, that the, the needs uh, in another community may be greater than the needs of one, uh, and, but we're gonna be even handed. We're gonna be equal and, and caring to all of those. And so let's see if I can get this to go up just a little bit. Let's see here. So over the next three years, we're gonna do four things. Um, we're going to invest in organizations, nonprofits uh, that are helping people, especially those that are vulnerable, uh, senior services, um, child development, homelessness, addiction recovery, mental health, 
you know, if you're a nonprofit and you're in the business of helping our vulnerable population, please apply. And what we have, we want to give out to you in grants. This is a big one near and dear to me, and that is the idea of number two, to incubate charitable ideas. Uh, as uh, Joel was saying, and which, by the way, guys, you talk about peer sharing and peer learning format. I've already got a full page of list of ideas to steal from Leslie County and from Perry County. Uh, but, but from Joel, when he was talking about, you know, not a whole lot of nonprofits, well, we want to help nonprofits incubate. And by that, a person, many people we know, come along and they've got, oh, I've got this great idea. I've got this great idea. And they're like, but you know what? I have no idea how one goes about, you know, I've heard you've got to be a 501c3. I've heard that's expensive, you know, all this other stuff. We can provide the platform for them to be able to take that charitable idea and give it a workout. You know, get in there, find out if you can find other people that are excited about it with you. Does it have any legs in terms of raising money to move it forward? Is is it going to be something that the leader who has the charitable idea has the grit and determination and passion for it to see it past its initial idea and they want to stick with it? You know, this way we can be doing, we can be ab absorbing the charity in our communities and it not go towards, you know, the IRS that has plenty of money on their own um, and uh, to support a structure that frankly wears people out before they even have even attempted to do their charitable idea. Uh, another one of our board members is very passionate about the idea that we need to have a regional disaster relief fund that that, you know, uh, these moments in time when we all come together and have these fantastic outlies of telethons and, and the foundation and going after the flood relief at, when it's an extraordinary event, there are all these other less extraordinary disasters that happen on an annual basis that could utilize a disaster relief fund to help people out. Uh, and so that's one of the ones that uh, we hope to create from scratch and do as a group. And then the fourth thing, of course, is to promote the local philanthropy to raise funds. And that's that one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, meeting with folks. So how are we gonna do this over the next three years? Well, we needed something to put our fingers on with regard to, to some type of outcome measurement. And we're, I don't know, I, I don't want to say lazy, we're just not really blessed with the ability to get out there and do a whole lot of data collecting, okay? So all we're asking anybody who gets a grant from us is just tell us how many lives you touched. That's all. That's all we want. You know, if you fed some senior citizens, we just want to know how many. You know, if you took, if you did a summer reading camp at the library, we just want to know how many, you know, and we're going to tally that up and we're going to try to invest in 3000 lives um, over the next three years. Uh, we want to increase the number of named funds and fiscal sponsorships we have one per year uh, so that we have uh, at the end at least three at the end of those uh, that are uh, in the incubator to become nonprofits. We want to raise uh, $10,000 in the next three years for our regional disaster relief fund, be it from grants, private, all that uh, to move forward. And then finally, we want, we have a goal of how many people that every single board member is going to sit down with on an annual basis and just tell them, we're not trying to raise money here, we're trying to raise friends, but we just want to tell them about this opportunity and this infrastructure. And we believe that over time, over the next three years, and we've already seen ourselves grow uh, very nicely in these per first two years, but we believe that we're going to start to, to move that forward so that those people who do have a philanthropic heart decide that they want to join with us uh, in, in these efforts, uh, that they can feel that it's safe, uh, that their um, desires will be honored and, uh, and acknowledged uh, to, their desire, to their specifications and that uh, we'll be able to uh, grow from there. Um, I, I, I relish the day when the grant making committee is sitting there and they have to meet uh, routinely instead of one time per year, routinely to decide who's gonna get funded. I, I'm really looking forward to that day uh, when that happens so that they can be discussing those issues. But for right now, when we, um, you know, 
I have only gone two years giving out grants to the tune of about $7,500 each year. It'll be a little while, but we'll get there. We will get there. So we're lean and mean, young and poor, but we're, we're going for it, you guys. So thank you so much to each of you all for doing um, a presentation of your plans. And there is um, a lot of work that happened behind the scenes on those by those board members for every one of these plans. And so I really appreciate that um, on uh, behalf of the board members. But um, so I know that we um, we have Rodney on the call and Jackson County has not yet started their planning process. Um, and so I am especially pleased that he's here to see what the plans kind of look like. And I wondered, Rodney, if you've had any specific questions for us about the planning process or if anybody else has, has anything that you all wanna share. All righty, well, so um, I, I'm hearing that people are saying that, you know, I heard an idea that I want to take from over here, an idea that I want to take from over there. And just remember that, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So um, that is Thank what we Rodney. Have. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, sorry. that's what I was thinking. I was thinking Rodney wanted to speak, but just couldn't get his mute off. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was not in gallery view, so I was having trouble seeing Yeah, it. he's trying to get his mute off, so. I wonder if I can do. Nope, I can't. I think it was really interesting how that each plan uh, was so different, uh, but yet uh, so supportive of the community that they're serving. So I think it's awesome how that how the, all of them came up with, with the plans and uh, how it's going to benefit their community. Joel, I have a couple of questions about yours. Um, I noticed that you guys have been the recipient of, of several grants, and, and that's very appealing to me. I mean, my job at HCTC is the director of grants and contracts. So um, grant work is, is something that, that piques my attention. Um, that's interesting to me, and, and I understand how that's working. So two questions. One, did you guys write the grants? Did you have like a, a person on board or did the foundation help you with that? And two, um, I assume that the foundation, the, I say, you know, the Appalachian Foundation is is administering those grants for you. So t tell, tell me a little bit or tell us a little bit about that process. That's interesting. We've done it both ways. Um, I've written the grants to UK for CEDIC and uh, Kathy and Bobby wrote the grant to Thompson. And, and we will have to mention that the Thompson Charitable Foundation, they only fund in specific counties. The Perry County is not one of their counties. So that, that was not that was not a thought yeah, for me. No, I, I'm, okay. no I, wasn't, I wasn't worried about that. Yeah. Um, but but I they am, did fund the ones that, that we requested. They say we got three counties good. and uh, Leslie County got three counties. So that's really exciting for, for them. But we're always on the lookout, Melissa, for-, for Well, grants. that was gonna be my next question, Joel, is did you identify these grant opportunities um, and, and then, you know, ask the foundation for help or was it vice versa or, um, and not that I'm saying it's, that's not my, I'm just trying to figure out how these things are happening organically. So it's not a judgment either way. I'm just literally looking for information. Uh, the aesthetic stuff kind of came through networking opportunities. Uh, and then Thompson has, has given to Leslie County for years. And uh, they were looking for new opportunities for ways to give. Um, and we kind of just got lucky and they wanted to give to the, the community foundation. So we were there to accept it. They contacted us. Uh, the biggest grant they've done for us so far is they wanted to help the black jewel miners when they got all laid off. Um, so we, we were the mechanism that they used to help those guys out. So that, that got our relationship started. So it's kind of just been relationship building and getting lucky. Um, cause that, that I, I don't know why, but that's just not something that I had particularly thought about, you know, for our foundation. I mean, it's my, it's my work. I mean, I know what, what it is and what's entailed. I just not really, I hadn't gone down that path. And so again, this is a, this is a peer learning opportunity. I, that opens up a little bit of a different, um, idea when I see some things sometimes is, is that possibly applicable? So, 
um, that is very good to know. Very good. We've gotten know. very lucky. It's 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 helped us out tremendously. Sure, sure, absolutely. Good to know. Rodney, I think we've managed to get you unmuted. So, did you have something you wanted to share a minute ago? Well, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, I really didn't have any have anything pressing, I, but I, I just wanted to say that I'm I, I am getting some takeaways from all three of these these plans, and as we get started in our plan here, uh, I, I'll be glad to see some of these things come to the table where we can where we can talk about them. So look, looking forward to getting started with, with our plan and appreciate the information that I'm receiving today. Thank you. Very good. Um, uh, Kathy and Bobby, one of the things that I am interested in is, uh, you know, I was showing you, we, we've got like a 13 page plan. I wouldn't be interested in that, but the graphic parts of it, I'm just wondering if there is a place or a, um, benefit, I would hope there's a benefit for each of the affiliate pages to maybe have a connection to those strategic plans. Um, you know, once we kind of consider them finished and firm within our individual community foundations, I would like to see something like that published so that if someone comes to check us out that they could click on there and kind of see our work and that kind of stuff. I think you're exactly right, Melissa, that if, and that would be up to each affiliate. If, if we wanted to put a link on the new website that says, you know, Perry County Strategic Plan or the theory, I forgot exactly what we're calling it. Uh, I think we started out with theory of change, but now I think we've tweaked that just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we've kind yeah. of moved, moved around a little bit with what we're calling it. So I think theory of yeah. action at one point we were calling it and investment mm -hmm. strategy. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think if the affiliate's comfortable sharing it, uh, then yes, I think that it, we should we will put that on the website. Melissa, you can we also, need, if, go ahead, if Bobby. affiliates are interested in sharing them between each other as well, with the affiliate's permission, we can put them on the resource page, the affiliate resource page, so that any affiliate could access any other affiliate's strategic plan with permission. And, and um, I plan to ask our foundation about that because I assume that that could be a resource um, and, and I was very interested in Joel's and Sandy's and if they end up putting it up there, that's something that would, you know, even going forward when we update the plan in two years, at least our, our plan's a two-year plan. It would be great to have other examples. So, and I'm sorry, Sandy, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say that when it came to flushing out our particular sub page on the, on the website, we actually used our bullet points. I mean, we use the language right out of our strategic plan to say, this is what we do and this is where we're focused, you know, so we just, uh, you know, um, so. Our, our folks did the same thing. I, they they, they grabbed okay. parts of it too. Um, I just like the pretty graphic. <laughs> and I just, because I, I think that that kind of, I would want a potential donor or even a grantee, potential grantee to know that we've really given thought to all of this. You know, we're serious about this. We're thoughtful about this. We are participating in strategic planning. So literally having something called a strategic plan um, is, is kind of what I'm hoping for. And, and maybe we would, maybe, you know, once we get closer to almost all of them being complete or, or maybe even before then, I don't know, we could probably send it to our design team and have them update it with some colors and some of the graphics with your personal logo. That way, if somebody clicks on that PDF file, it's going to be impressive. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to look, you know, very well, very professional. Not that it doesn't now, Donna, I'm not saying that, but no, with, no, no, branding, I, with, with the new branding, it'll just be uh, cohesive and, and yep. it, you know, they'll yep. be impressed when they pull it up. Like, wow, they, they really, you know, have a, a plan of what they want to help with their community. Yeah, I think that's an absolutely great idea because they, the plans all do look like some have cover pages, some don't have cover pages. You know, it's, it's as we were developing it, um, every, it was a very organic process for each of the boards so far, and will continue to be actually, except for that centerpiece of that template. Um, Rodney, I, you're not asking for this, but um, I really encourage you to kind of go through this process, not, and it sounds like you're going to, but um, what I was, what we learned um, is that we, we didn't have some things as formalized 
and I don't mean formalized as in black and white and stickler for details, but in our own minds, we didn't have some things formalized. And going through this exercise with Donna, regardless if we ended up with something on paper or not, we were able to really kind of firm up what we wanted to do, you know, for example, be more proactive rather than reactive waiting for a grant application. We all said, we want to be proactive. We want to look around, see what's going on that is, is viable and something we want to participate. And we want to reach out and say, we want to participate, not wait for them to come and ask us. So, um, it, and, and we would have never had those conversations had we not gone through that exercise. So I felt like that it was, it was very beneficial, not just in that we ended up with a document, which is fantastic, but that we really, um, uh, caused ourselves to have to stop and think and ponder. That's why it took us so long and why we had to keep meeting because things we really thought about things. And it's like, okay, we got to have another meeting because we got to flesh all that out, you know. And oh man, that opened up another can of worms. So now we got to flesh all that out. But it was all worth it. It was all worth it. I don't want to make it sound like it wasn't, but um, it was a it was a great experience for us. I'm glad we have it. Uh, just okay. a question for Joel. Joel, how many people do you think you guys are going to have to invite to join Club 404 before you get 400 people? A lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 10 to 1? Um, we've not, I mean, we've not even talked about that. We're, we're going to develop, uh, we've got a mailing list started. Uh, we did a project a couple years ago. Our student rep went back and got the names of every Leslie County High School graduate from 1950 to 2018. Okay. So we, we started a database there. So uh, that's our jumping on point. We're going to turn that into a, uh, a mailing list. And then we're going to rec uh, try to identify a thousand high quality, high, I don't know how, high interests. Uh, yeah. targets that we're going to uh, put special okay. interest in yeah. and uh, and go from there. But uh, yeah, as far as a ratio, we haven't even talked about what to expect. But, sure. Yeah, I'll be interested to see the numbers when they come in. Yeah. But you were yeah. talking a while ago about being good stewards and, and, and trustworthy. One reason we've waited to do a capital com campaign until now is since we started, we've we've granted three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, see. and I mean, for a little county like Leslie County, that's yeah. a lot of money. That's a lot. We've of money. done a lot of projects and we've done a lot of cool things. So we can say, you know, just imagine what we can do with a little more help if you if everybody yeah. gets involved. So um, that 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 was kind of our thinking, you know, why we didn't just jump into a capital campaign and give us money. Well, we ain't done anything yet. So now that we've yeah. accomplished some things. Uh, we, we've got a little little proof in the pudding. I think we can uh, we'll be a little more successful. So we're going to take a little bit of a different approach. Um, if if the uh, foundation agrees, when we have these next meetings, of course, you know there has to be consensus. But the the um, the a a Ashley Roundtree kind of approach of identifying, you know. Uh, you know, what was it like eight, you know, six to eight people, you know, to kind of talk about for, um, you know, bequeaths of sorts. Um, I, I think that that's kind of how our donor development is going to start around is, is identifying, you know, people who we could possibly go have conversations with, um, whether that be giving to a particular project uh, with the idea of later giving, you know, uh, in other ways. But um, I think that's the approach that we're going to take. Um, I think that folks will be fairly compelled when they watch the videos and, and kind of get involved because I, I thought it was, you know, I, I, doable, I guess. And when I say doable, not necessarily that the money comes in, but that, yes, I can identify eight people. I can identify eight people. I can put them on a list. No, you don't have to necessarily go talk to them by yourself or anything like that. You know, there's going to be a big support system. You know, the foundation's going to be there, but we're going to identify this list and we're going to work through this list. And so that I think can be successful. Not necessarily that we're going to get a bunch of money out of it, but that we can find the names and we can go through the exercise. So 
that's that's the approach that I'm hoping that we take. All right, well, we're just a couple minutes past one o'clock. I don't want to cut off conversation if anybody has a last burning question, but um, anybody? Well, we really appreciate your participation today and the presentation of these plans. And we will get this up as a recording onto the foundation's website and um, encourage your, or onto the YouTube channel, sorry. Um, encourage your uh, board members to watch this because I think that they will learn from some of these plans as well and we can continue to think going forward about how we connect the affiliates because none of you is working in a silo and um, you have a lot to share with each other and a lot to contribute to each other and so these plans might be an opportunity to do that as well. So if you have ideas about how we can continue these kinds of conversations um, then feel free to share them back and we will try to do that. So, so thanks everybody and have a great afternoon. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Bye.